Good morning and welcome to Onward in Love and Caregiving. I'm Greg Johnson. I'm the president and CEO of GJP International, Greg Johnson Partnerships International. And here in New York, I have the great privilege of serving as the chief advisor to the CEO of Emblem Health for family caregiving. And first of all, I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy and joyous new year. Yes, there are a lot of challenges, there's no question, but we can do it together. And that is very much a theme that I want to look at today as we look at the world of family caregiving. I wanna thank you for watching these programs and sharing these programs and writing to me, asking for guidance, sharing your stories. I'm always grateful for your stories. And I just want to remind you that the way to be in touch is very, very simple. It's an email, Greg Johnson, all small case, Greg Johnson at gjp-international.com. That's the email address, gregjohnson at gjp-international.com, and I would love to hear from you. I also want to remind you that our YouTube channel, which you can get simply by Googling, is Family Caregiving with the Rev. And all of these programs that we have been doing for now nearly three years since we began them in Indonesia, uh, are available and they are there for you to use free of charge, obviously, and to share them, uh, to use them as a reminder to perhaps go back and look at a theme. But there are many, many other programs beyond, beside this one on there, many of the programs that I've had the privilege of doing for Emblem Health. The You Are Not Alone series. It is also the place where you can find the one on recovery in recovering and also um, the spiritual toolkit. There are just lots and lots of programs. And of course, hymns by request are there. So I urge you to take a look at those and to share them. For those of you who are clergy and people in the social work world, please feel free to use them with your groups. Many of them are programs of a length that are appropriate for listening and then having a discussion under your wonderful guidance. Now, has as has been our tradition during the pandemic, we want to take a moment before we begin our topic for the day to focus on the pandemic. And yes, we're going through a very, very serious period right now. January here in New York City has been extraordinarily, extraordinarily difficult. And many, many people are taking ill. So let us remember Vaccines, masks over our nose when we're outside, when we're inside in other places than our home. Let's be the consciousness of intelligent human beings, of people who care, caring not only for ourselves, but for others. And so I would like to begin one of our regular viewers sent me this recently. It's a program from the Sisters of Holy Cross out in Notre Dame, Notre Dame Indiana. And in it was a wonderful uh, piece on caregiver coping skills, things that we have talked about. But it ended with a lovely prayer. And I thought to begin the 2022 year, this would be an appropriate prayer for this program. So I'm going to ask you to just take a moment to take a deep breath. And we're gonna take a lot of deep breaths during this year, there are gonna be challenges. But I know for me, it is that deep breath that just slows me down. It puts me back in the center where that spark of the divine exists. And as I take that deep breath, I invite that spirit to reach out to the spirit of creation the divine, by whatever name you may be comfortable, calling forth 
that connection, that connection that tells us we are not alone. And let us pray. Compassionate and healing God. God, as you understand that word, help us to see your face in the faces of our sisters and brothers who are sick or injured. Guide us to reach out to them with hearts of compassion and hands which serve their needs. When they are anxious, help us to know how to reassure them. When they feel alone, help us to notice and be present. When they feel confused, help us to listen and assist in finding answers to their concerns. When they need comfort, help us to communicate care and understanding. When they are weak or discouraged, help us find ways to refresh their spirits. When doubts or darkness touch them, give your light to guide them and lift them up. Help us as caregivers to always turn to you as the source of our strength and compassion. As we seek to serve the needs of our sisters and brothers who are vulnerable. And it is so. Amen. I love that prayer and I hope that you found it as lovely as I did. And now, before we go into our conversation for this morning, as we think of those who are suffering in the pandemic, both the pandemic of systemic racism and the pandemic of COVID-19 with particular focus on the Omicron variant. Let us remember the one rule of family caregiving. Before I can care for you, I have to care for myself so that I can give from my abundance. I can't say, lean on me and we both fall over. No, I need to take that time, that quiet time, to find strength and to deal with myself physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And I think one of the prayers that capture this more than any is a prayer that many of you love and request. And so for the new year, together we pray, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow charity. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is error, the truth. Where there is doubt, the faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. To be understood as to understand. To be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying to ourselves that we are born to eternal life. Amen and amen. As we begin a new year, this is a time people have done resolutions, people have reassessed. There has been a, a bit of a hiatus perhaps in work and that sort of thing, and people have had a bit of time to do some serious reflecting. Many people have become caregivers, and since 2020 and the beginning of the COVID, I frankly feel the world has become caregivers. We're in this together. That's the theme this year for Father Richard Rohr's meditations. Being in it together. We are not alone. I think of dear and may he rest in peace, Archbishop Tutu, and his love for Ubuntu. I am because you are. 
I am because you are. It is in community. And caregiving is exactly what that is all about. And I want to go back because one of the things that happens always when we start a new year, and this was always true at Emblem when I was teaching the classes there, people would come to take the classes in family caregiving and I could look just at the group and I would know this person is right in the middle of it. All I needed to do is look at their countenance. And then as I heard their story, I knew they were in a very difficult place. Others just seemed to be auditing the class and that was fine. They felt that down the road, they were going to need to know it. And most of the cases always ended up being thinking of parents and grandparents. We've come to see how many other faces there are in the world of family caregiving. We're going to be talking about that in a couple of weeks. But that was the general rule. The next time I would offer the class, that same person who seemed to be auditing suddenly became the person who was in the middle of it. Now, I have many of you from all over the world, and I'm thrilled to be in discussions with people in many parts of the world. And I thank Donnie very much for making that possible, particularly with a group in Indonesia. We are talking about family caregiving as a very uniting factor in many, many elements within the country. People who are new to the world of caregiving, need certain basic information. And those of us who have been in the world of family caregiving need at times just to pause and to reflect on what I call the basics of family caregiving or welcome to the world of family caregiving. And after this pandemic and with the pandemic still going on, we have more and more people who are identifying as family caregivers. And so for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be spending some time going over basics of family caregiving that I hope will help you as you're dealing in your particular caregiving situation, or as you as a teacher, as a clergy person, as a social worker, as a medical professional, are dealing with others in the world of family caregiving. Because it's very important that we often take just a break to go back and refresh. Now, Rosalind Carter probably says it better than anyone that I know. After serving in the White House, President and Mrs. Carter returned to Georgia, and Mrs. Carter established the Rosalind Carter Family Caregiving Institute. It is an incredible organization, and I've had the privilege of being there on a number of occasions. But Mrs. Carter is credited with a saying that I love, and it's where I want to begin. In life, there are really only four type of people. There are those of us who are caregivers today. I'm one and many of you are. There are those of us who have been caregivers. There are those of us who will be caregivers. And there are those of us, like me, a multiple stroke survivor, who will be cared for. That really does not leave many of us out. As a definition for family caregiving, there are two of them that I love and I have used for years. Both of them come from the brilliant, really early pioneer in the world of family caregiver, the very brilliant Dr. Carol Levine from United Hospital Fund, now retired. But Carol, who was absolutely a mentor to me, when I first began this work, we were on 34th Street, Emblem was up there, and she was in the Empire State Building. And I remember going to her and saying, may I sit at your feet and learn? And I've been blessed over these many, many years, now going on 22 years, to have learned from the best. And she continues to write and to do so many wonderful things. But 
two t uh, definitions that I love because people will say, what is family caregiving? Or what is a family caregiver? Caregiver. Well, I love this. A family caregiver is someone who shows up, that's the easy part, and stays to help. Someone who shows up and stays to help. Another definition of a family caregiver comes from the title of Carol's first book, which was really telling her story as a caregiver with her late husband. And the title of that book says it all. What is a caregiver? It is someone who is always on call. And as I like to say, it never happens between nine to five. It happens after when you've got to push buttons and when you've got to go online and try and get answers. That's a wonderful definition. It's someone who is always on call. And it is the reason that we at Emblem are spending so much time talking to corporations about their employees, their staffs, who are indeed family caregivers. They've got two jobs. They've got that nine to five obligation, that which takes care of their do re mi as it were to living. But they also have a job that's 24 seven. And that is the job of the family caregiver. And finding help for those two is something that we want to deal with and something that we are successfully dealing with in many ways. And we've talked about that and we will come back to that. In family caregiving, we only have one rule. And that one rule is very simple. Before I can care for you, I've got to care for myself. And that's probably the hardest, hardest task for a caregiver, because we get so involved with the care recipient that we can forget ourselves. And in forgetting ourselves, we end up becoming a care recipient ourselves. When I was asked to create the Care for the Family Caregiver Program at Emblem Health, I remember there were two things that were extremely important to me. One was I said to the person who was interviewing me, the wonderful Dr. Carl Flemister, I said, Carl, I really don't know about insurance. He said, you'll learn that. And I have, and I'm blessed for that. But I said, what excites me about this opportunity, and little did I know it was to be the ministry of my entire life. But I said, what excites me about it is it may help to find an answer to something that I've always observed. And it remains true in my life because of my work as a person in family caregiving. As a minister, I had buried more caregivers than care recipients, and that always struck me, though I had never explored it. Well, now I have, and I certainly see why, because it's that very first rule. Before I can care for you, I must care for myself. That's not selfish. It's absolutely necessary. And so I urge people, caring for ourselves is the first step in caring for another person. And that's something that we will talk about and we continue to talk about in all of these programs and why we have done these sorts of things. So when people ask me, what was my mission statement? I remember this at that first luncheon so well where I was just getting the idea that I was actually being asked to create this. And I said, well, it would strike me, and it still strikes me, that our purpose, our mission statement, is keeping caregivers caregivers. Keeping caregivers caregivers, not creating more care recipients. And when I say that, I also want to just review with you because it's something that's very important for people to understand. 
the healthcare system can be quite confusing. The easiest definition that I have ever used, and I continue to use it wherever I speak, is to compare the healthcare system to a three-legged stool. Now, you know as well as I do that for that stool to stand, it needs all three legs. Well, what are the three legs? First of all, as we've just been talking about, the care recipient, someone who is ill physically, emotionally, or spiritually. And usually it's all three. One may be the more predominant area, but all three become involved. And we've all experienced that situation. So the first is the care recipient. The second leg are the professional caregivers. These are the people who are paid and paid various amounts of money, but anyone who is paid, whatever it may be, is considered a professional caregiver. So the doctors, the nurses, the people who work at Emblem, the people who work in distribution, the pharmacy, all of these people, the home care attendants, on and on and on, all the healthcare professionals who are the backbone of this recovery and of our indeed pandemic. And to them, we say, thank you, thank you, thank you. They're the second leg. The third leg are each and every one of us, by and large, the unpaid family caregiver. Now, there are things that are happening that we pray will help change and augment that. And in certain states, that's true. But basically, the family caregiver is the unpaid family caregiver. And too often, as I've just said to you before, they become the silent patient. All three are very much needed. The professional caregiver focuses on cure. Yes, that's true. We as caregivers focus on care. What's the difference? In the world of cure, They look at all of the facts and say, perhaps this can happen. Perhaps this this treatment will lead to this outcome. It's changing what is. That's the role of the professional caregiver. It is not the role of the family caregiver. We are caregivers, not cure givers. And that is an important thing for all of us to understand from the very beginning. Our role as a caregiver is to accept the situation exactly as it is. And then, and then move forward in caring in dealing with the reality of the present, being informed by the professional caregivers, but accepting what is and realizing we don't know what the story is supposed to be for any of us. This is the reality today and the gift of caregiving is we can be present for it. And we can be present without judgment. For when we take away the component of judgment, we are greatly enhanced. And we are greatly blessed. Family caregivers, you are the backbone of the world's health care systems. Unpaid, overworked, 24-7. That's your lot. And by grace, you have accepted that. We are grateful to you. And I am grateful to have this chance to share with you. Yes, I'm someone who does this professionally. But it's also been the story in my life. We walk together. 
I like sharing this with you. I like helping you to know that you are not alone. Not at all. There is help. And we're going to explore that as we move on together, following our journey in 2022 as a community of persons who care. And now I'm going to conclude our broadcast with that prayer once more of the caregiver. I loved that and I, I thank Joanne for sending that to us. And we pray in all the holy names of God. Compassionate and healing God, help us to see your face in the faces of our sisters and brothers who are sick or injured. Guide us to reach out to them with hearts of compassion and hands which serve their needs. When they are anxious, help us to know how to reassure them. When they feel alone, help us to notice and be present. When they feel confused, help us to listen and assist in finding answers to their concerns. When they need comfort, help us to communicate to care and understanding. When they are weak and discouraged, help us find ways to refresh their spirits. When doubt or darkness touches them, give your light to guide them and lift them up. Help us as caregivers to always turn to you as the source of our strength and compassion as we seek to serve the needs of our sisters and brothers who are vulnerable. And we pray in all the holy names of God. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with me this morning. I look forward to seeing you again next Friday, onward in love and caregiving. Until then, let us care for our precious brothers and sisters. And let us always say, onward in love and caregiving. Namaste. God bless and thank you for joining me this morning.